Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about my 3D printed server. As you might have guessed, it's not the server itself that is 3D printed, but the case. So let's take a look. In the front we have the gigabit LAN port, four USB 3 ports and a lot of open space. On the left hand side we have a hole for the 12 volt power supply and a hole to push the power button. And in the back we have the open mesh again and an 80 mm fan to push air through the case. The case is divided in three parts. The back part and I split the front into two. This is maybe something that I will revert because it's not that stable. But the idea was that those parts could be modular so we have some space to add displays or some control buttons. Um, we'll see where this goes in the future. The top case is secured with 3mm screws, so let's take these out. So once we have removed those screws, we can see the first half of the front part, which is the NanoPi M4. And if we take off the other half, So this is the, the, the core of the server. We have the, the main board with the serial ATA add-on board, which gives us four native S ATA ports connected with a PCI Express interface here. And I have room for two hard drives here. In my case, these are two four terabyte Seagate disks and there is room for two more disks on top of this. So I will be adding more disks in the future. And this is the server from the inside. Again we have the 80 mm fan, lots of room for cables. You can see here I left a lot of empty room here in the bottom plane to improve the printing time and the amount of plastic you need to print this and if you do get one of these and want to do some heavy loads or calculations with this do get it with the cooling block always get it with the cooling block and also with an additional fan to keep it cool printing time of this thing is five to six hours for the bottom part and another five to six hours for the top parts when you print the top parts this is not part of the design so this is um, in the stl file a solid plane and in your slicer you have to make sure that you have zero bottom layers and zero top layers and then choose an infill of your liking to get the desired pattern. This is the honeycomb pattern with 10% infill. So make sure when you put those things onto the slicer to orient them in the correct way. The easiest way to check that you have them oriented the right way is those holes here on the side should be vertical when you take a look at the model in the slicer. So if that's the case, you know that your mesh is going to appear in the right wall. To connect the cooling fan, there's this port here. I didn't have the right connector, so I had to use my wire wrapping tool to connect the wires. It's not the safest way to do this, so make sure if you do it the same way, you don't create any short circuits. But it was a way of getting it to work for me without having to wait ages for the connector. When you turn it on, the fan port is not active by default, so you need to turn this on by software. You can find the details on how to do this in my blog post, so check the link in the description. So at the beginning of this video I mentioned that I wanted to add a display to the server case. I added a display to the server, but not directly to the case. I decided to go with a remote solution, so this is the TTGO weather station. If you like this project, what would you do differently? If you see any things that I could improve, let me know what you think. And for those of you who want to see how to install the components, I also added a time lapse of exactly this at the end of this video. So I hope you had fun. See you next time. Bye bye.